Hello again, we are here to analyse the Draca cinematic that recently came out and that I actually was not going to do tonight uh, because I've just come back from work and I want to play some Tony Hawk's before bed. But then Taliesin and Evertel uploaded their analysis video and I really want to watch it because I really enjoy their content um, but I don't want to accidentally plagiarise their analysis because accidental plagiarism is a thing. So I'm gonna do this and then watch their video and realize why I was wrong all along. Before we start, my general uh, summary of the cinematic on what I thought about it was that it was very good. The art style is, as always, amazing. Draca is a queen and we stan her. And that this is inevitably a little bit less exciting than the Bastion one, but that's just because the Bastion one is front-loaded with so much lore of a pre-existing character or pre-existing characters we already know about, the big Arthas name and all of that kind of thing, and we knew going into, or at least us sane uh, people who know how to set expectations, knew going into the uh, next cinematics that they weren't quite going to be the scope and uh, hypeness because that's a word, of the previous one. Uh, but that being said, I really bloody enjoyed it, and we're now going to go through it shot by shot. Well, I am. You're just going to listen to me. But I'll make it make sense, I promise. So we open on Draca's death, and you have to wonder if that's going to be a theme going forwards. We opened on Ufa's death, we open on Draca's death. But given that the next one, the Ardenweald one, is about a Silvarian, a Sylvan? I don't know how you say that yet. Um... I don't know if we'll be seeing his death because he's not a character that we already know of, so I don't know if that's a theme going forwards. Eva Waver, we see her hunted down and killed by a group of orcs. Um, and at first, when I first saw this, I was like, wait, I was wrong. She was killed by humans who were trying to, you know, kill all the orcs and stuff. Uh, but it turns out I got my lore a little bit wrong. I blame the movie, even though I love the movie. Uh, no, she was killed by orcs under the orders of other orcs or humans. You know what, I really need to read up on her lore again, I'm sorry. But we see her brutal and tragic murder in front of her baby child, who we know is Thrall, but uh, is slightly like the Bastion cinematic, although not as much. Um, we see that uh, the character that we're already familiar with isn't actually the focus of the cinematic, which is kind of cool. It's more like a side character who's being bigged up. Uh, to be more of a main character, and that's really cool, and I hope they continue to do that in future expansions, because heck yes. But yeah, very important to notice the eyes here, the orcs that are killing her are blood red eyes, because they've got the the crazed, the blood crazed uh, blood of Manoroth going through their veins, uh, and making them do some pretty bad stuff, whereas Draca, even though she's got the green skin because of how the fell kind of spread across the uh, across the orcs like a plague a little bit, uh, she doesn't have her red eyes because she's still herself. Anyways, Draca eats it, and then uh, we quickly get a nice little map of Maldraxxus and a little overview of what that place even is and how there's five, or there were, five houses um, who each have a kind of specialty and they are basically the armies of the afterlife. And we get to see all of these cool looking spooky skeleton boys, doot doot. I will not apologise for that joke. Anyways, rather interestingly, the first thing that Draca really tells us about her time in Maldraxxus is that she is part of the House of Eyes, which is like the spying house. And that was a strange fit for a warrior's soul. So it's weird that she kind of turns from a warrior into basically a rogue. And she acknowledges that it's weird. But I have to ask, does that make it any less weird? I actually think that makes it more weird. There's plenty of discussion to be had around that, like, for instance, she even states that, you know, I'm a warrior, so why am I having to do rogue things? She didn't want to do rogue things. Uh, she didn't want to be stealthy, that's not who she is. Um, but that's the afterlife she was sent to, that's the place she was given by the Arbiter, right? Um, so it makes you wonder, like, if you're dying and the Arbiter's judging where you're supposed to go, you, that must mean you're not going to a place where you should go, or necessarily where you fit properly, as is the kind of explanation that's given to you. Um, it's more like you go to a place where the Arbiter wants you to go, where they think that you will serve best, which, again, is some really fucked up dystopian shit. Actually, I may be being a little bit too liberal with my use of the word dystopian. We're not in Bastion anymore. This isn't a place that's supposed to be perfect and 
high heavenly and stuff. But still, you know what I mean? It's ethically kind of fucked. You've died, but you don't get to rest because some arbitrary um, arbiter, I guess that's why we've got that word. Um, don't you just love it when etymology sneaks up on you? Uh, but yeah, that, that force decides that actually we want you to be a rogue now. Good luck. Okay, so next up is probably the most important part of the cinematic. Uh, we see uh, Felgards in front of a very familiar looking keep, and it's a shot that has been reused from the Harbinger's cinematic where the Illidari go and invade. In fact, you know what? Before I keep talking about this, I'm gonna go and rewatch that right now. Christ, I forgot how good that fucking shot was. Okay, so that place in Harbingers is a Legion world and they are the demon hunters are there to kill the Doomlord Asgoth. Um, at first I thought this was the place where they go in the book to get the Sargari Keystone to go to all of the Legion worlds, uh, but I was wrong, so it's a good thing I went back and I rewatched that. In fact, going back and comparing the two, it does look like this is a reused shot for a different location, as much as I hate to say it. Um, in Harbingers it zooms out and it looks like it's a fairly barren world with no, like, plantation on it. Plantation. With no, like, um vegetation on it, no no shrubs, no trees, but we do see Draca spying on that keep from a bush, so it is supposed to be a different planet. However, we do know from the game that Legion, uh, the Legion kind of mass produce a lot of their keeps, they kind of sometimes function as spaceships that land and become keeps, so I think the reused shot uh, was supposed to remind us of that. It may be a different location, um, but it's still very much a Legion base. And I think it is supposed to... I don't... Okay, so here's the thing. The, the internet's blowing up because they're like, Oh, Blizzard is so lazy, they reused a shot and they didn't even think we'd notice. Um, well, no, because that's one frame out of a short which has hundreds and hundreds of different stills and little animated things in it. Um, they could have put in a, a, a fresh thing if they wanted to. They did this on purpose, and anyone who believes otherwise is just someone who really, really wants to hate Blizzard. <laughs> well, like the developer side of Blizzard anyway, which is the part that I can't understand hating. No, I think what Blizzard are trying to do is very clearly make you go, wait, I recognise that keep and connect this to the uh, Illidan cinematic from years ago uh, because it's the whole point is that they are in like invading a legion world and Draca here is going into the keep and she is sealing some kind of a map and first of all I don't know where that map is of um, and I think it's going to be important later but very clearly the point of this reused shot is to show you that oh shit they're in the world of the living right now not the world of the dead they're not in the Shadowlands Ag uh, I keep going to call it Agra you know Draca <laughs> um, goes on missions uh, outside of the Shadowlands that's what the House of Eyes does and that's crazy not only that, but they had stuff to do with the Legion, which does make sense if you look back in the lore. It is mentioned in Chronicle that the Helm of Domination was stolen by the Nafrazim and used by the Legion to make the Lich King to kind of like dominate Azeroth for them. Quick lore, let <laughs> a quick little lore lesson for you. But it's super cool that we're getting these lore tidbits of like there was this cosmic war going on, or maybe not war, maybe like cosmic cold war, uh, which is really fun to say, I do recommend it, um, but yeah, there's a lot more going on than we ever knew, because none of this took place on Azeroth, it took place between the Legion and the Shadowlands, on a Legion planet, whatever this was, and I think it's going to be super fun to speculate on that for a while, and what's crazy is I kind of missed this shot the first time I saw this, I saw the Felguards and I went, huh, there are Felguards in the Shadowlands? <laughs> that was my reaction. And then I saw Garona. Oh my god. Okay, I'm not going to cut this out. I keep calling Draca either Agra or Garona because there are three prominent orc females in all of Warcraft lore and they are all very similar in their characteristics, okay? Don't blame me. Anyway, my point is that this is a cinematic that you get a lot out of when you rewatch it and pay attention to the small details. And when I saw Draca steal a map and kind of slink away from it, I originally thought it was a training exercise. Nope, turns out she was on a mission. And hopefully we learn more about that very soon. If I had to guess, I would say that maybe, uh, despite initially um, poo-pooing Devos' uh, claim that Ufa was uh, injured by someone who uh, wielded a sword of a moor, what actually happened was that they took this upwards in the Shadowlands, 
um, to whatever like council thing they have where they talk between different covenants if there is such a thing and they said look um, someone does have more technology outside of the moor and we need to figure out why this happened and I'm guessing um, that led them to the legion and what's probably happening here is that Draka in uh, House of Eyes has been given a mission to infiltrate a legion base and gather intel as to what they know about the Shadowlands and I don't know how the map factors into it but I'm pretty sure it factors into it Anyway, the next thing we learn is that the House of Plagues, uh, which is one of the five houses, has been wiped out. So one-fifth of Maldraxxus uh, has been wiped out, which is a pretty significant thing, given that Maldraxxus makes up the armies of the afterlife. So clearly there is a war going on, and given that we've just seen what happened with Draca and the Legion, I think it's safe to say that the Legion are somehow involved in this war, which is super cool. I'm looking forward to learning more about what the connection is between the Legion and the Afterlife. Especially when you consider some of the very subtle links between the Legion and the Afterlife. For instance, demons can regenerate back on Argus using the power of the Titan, Argus the Unmaker, who, through a lot of imagery and symbolism we can gather, would have been the Titan of Death had he not been corrupted. Unless, you know, Belula fucking lied to me. Also pretty interesting is that the dude who's talking to Draka, whose name I don't know, uh, he says to her that if uh, Maldraxxus doesn't do its duty, the Shadowlands will fall. And you have to wonder, what the fuck does that mean? How, like, what happens when the afterlife falls? What happens to those souls and what are they being used for? Actually, you know what, it's just hit me. The Legion, uh, if it is the Legion, they would probably want all of those souls for their soul engines so that they could make even more powerful um, weapons of war. Because, I mean, that's what they use, right? They use soul engines to power their shit, which is pretty fucking bleak, but it's true, it's what they do. So yeah, the stakes are incredibly high. All mortal lives, like all of their souls in the afterlife being stolen to, to you know, power some demon machinery to destroy the universe? Yikes, dude. Yeah, the stakes are pretty high indeed. As I said, the cinematic gets deeper the more you think about it. Unless I'm completely wrong, in which case that would be uh, really embarrassing, so please never bring this up again. Ah, uh, he tells Drucker to be watchful. House of Eyes. Nose tap. Also, hello, can I have Drucker's mount when she's done with it? Because that's a really fucking cool looking mount. I really do like the shot after she's just ridden up to those uh, skelly boys, for lack of a official name and said to them, you know, my brothers, I'm here on urgent business, and then the necropolis, question mark, uh, gets shot out of the sky, her head turn, and the shock on her face is really well done, as well as the lighting as well, that's all uh, really nice. You have to wonder as well what it is that shot the necropolis down. It looks like green fell fire, but then in Maldraxxus, everything looks green, so it's kind of hard to tell. And then you have the betrayal in an almost exact mirror of how Draka originally died. Except this time she has her spooky rogue abilities to turn invisible, so she doesn't just get stabbed when she's on the floor. She, I believe the idea here is that she utilizes the powers of both a rogue and a warrior to sneak around and then strike with the strength of a warrior and kill them both. Um, yeah, and that raises a lot of questions about what happens when you die in the Shadowlands, but I think, if I remember right, Blizzard already answered that and said you just become, like, pure anima, and you go, like, back into the making up of the Shadowlands or something like that. I really like the idea of the skeletons coming out of the green mist. It's a very cool uh, effect. It does remind me a little bit of the... Uh, the, uh, what's the fucking, I can't believe I've forgotten the name of it, the Game of Thrones thing, the Endless Night or something. The Long Night, that's the one. But anyway, it's not the first time that Blizzard would have taken inspiration from Game of Thrones, but it's very well done, all the same. And I'm not saying they did necessarily take inspiration from Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones didn't invent whites coming out of fog, but these dudes look super whitey. Um, it's cool. So yeah, as I said, the idea is she gets betrayed, uses her rogue powers to survive that, and then she gets surrounded, uses her warrior powers to overcome that. So the next shot, when she's talking to that grave dude, who, by the way, totally a Felguard, right? He's totally got to be what the race of Felguard were before they became Felguards because of the Legion corrupted them. That would be really cool. Uh, similar to how Revendreff is full of Nafrazim. Uh, they're definitely Nafrazim. She fucking plonks a bag of heads down. She's like, oh yeah, these are the dudes who betrayed you. Um, 
just like you know no no big deal just plumping heads down but the fucking expression on her face as she gazes out onto the i'd say horizon but i don't know if shadowlands has horizons uh but into the distance um is oh, it's such a good piece of artwork i said it in bastion i'll say it with the maldraxxus one as well the way that they portray the faces of these characters is so emotive it's so fucking well done I can't imagine the level of expertise it takes to draw something as fucking telling as that. Ordeals such as this either break the sword or strengthen it. If that isn't Maldraxxus philosophy in a nutshell from what I can gather. And then when it turns out that, oh, the key to saving Maldraxxus isn't a key, it's you, Dracker. You were the key all along. Maybe it's slightly tropey, but at the same time, it's like, oh, hey, the spy master knew he was going to get attacked, and he was just sending Draka away to her true destiny as a baroness, um, which is as badass as she has every right to be. One small nitpick. Come, our enemies will strike openly soon. Didn't they just strike openly by fucking one-shotting an Acropolis out of the sky? No. That's not openly. Maybe that was from the Necrolord dudes themselves and not the actual Legion. Who knows? Again, just assuming it's the Legion. Just assuming. Because green versus green, baby. And that final shot at the end of her as the Baroness of Maldraxxus with all of her skelly boys uh, in the back surrounding her is hella damn cool. And I want it as a one of those live wallpaper things that you can get on wallpaper engine i want it as one of those i should look for that later really and that's about that and what's funny about that being that is i assumed that this episode where i discussed uh, this one wouldn't be anywhere near as long as the bastion one because there was less to discuss but here we are at almost 20 minutes once again well we've just passed 16 minutes to be fair but i thought this would be like a five six minutes thoughts on so yeah i think this is one of those cinematics that absolutely is more interesting the more you think about it and the more you analyze it and the more you talk about it the more angles you consider it from um it doesn't tell you what's going on but it hints uh, in various ways as to some really exciting stuff that could be going on and I think definitely the first time I watched it I took it at face value and I thought oh this was this was good it introduced us to Maldraxxus but it didn't really tell us anything um, and it wasn't very exciting but now that I've sat here and recorded this and analyzed it I'm like ooh, that was really fucking good Anyway, thank you for joining me in choosing to watch this video or listen to this Podler episode as I ramble once more about uh, my biggest obsession in life other than my own failings. And I will see you <laughs> in a much cheerier thoughts on around this time next week based on the Ardenweald one with our with our Silverian boy or Sylvan boy or whatever the heck those dudes are called. They're like goat people, except they're not the space goat people, they're like the afterlife goat people. I don't know, dude, I didn't make this game. <laughs>